Jason was a very shy and quiet out-of-state student from a small town. I think his graduating class probably had about 50 students. Jason was a good student. He liked math and science, but he didn't know any engineers, and he didn't really know much about engineering. We recognize that for students like Jason to succeed, they need to rapidly build an engineering identity and get engaged in the engineering community at our schools. At ASU, our approach to starting the engineering identification and community building process is our three-day E2 camp for all incoming students prior to the start of the fall semester. We take the students into the woods in the mountains up in Prescott, Arizona, about 90 miles north of campus. What does E2 stand for? More on that later. We started E2 10 years ago, 10 years ago, with four camps. We've been running every single year since then, and last summer we ran 10 camps over the course of a couple of weeks with over 2,000 students participating. The dean and I were at all the camps. The camp is a blend of small engineering competitions. For example, we give the students random materials, ask them to design a boat, and then race the boat across the swimming pool. We also spend a lot of time on team working and communication skills. And one of the ways that we do that is at camp, there's an outdoor low ropes course that presents a lot of challenges to the individual teams. We also spend a lot of time educating the students on the various student engagement activities and how they can become a part of our community. At the end of every summer, we work with our current students and our freshmen to try to identify what went well at camp, what didn't go so well, how can we improve it. And in that manner, we really try to engage the students heavily in the camps and try to get them to take ownership for the camp experience. Students attend E2 as a part of interdisciplinary teams. We actually mix up all the different majors. <clears throat> the students will literally live together, they'll eat together, and they'll participate in all of the activities together under the leadership and mentorship of one of our current students, and we call those students camp counselors. Faculty and staff also volunteer at E2. Some of them come up for a day, some of them will come up for three days. And at camp, they're typically gonna be helping us coordinate activities or judge some of the different competitions that are taking place. We're pretty careful not to over-program the students during the E2 camps. Uh, we try to build in some free time during the day, and every night we have a two-hour campfire with some mores, of course, and it's during this free time that the students really have a chance to engage with each other and to connect with the faculty and staff uh, that are also up at the camp. And that's where we actually kind of get to know the students on a personal level. ASU is big, okay, but we can make the one-on-one -on -one connections and begin to try to find out, you know, what are some of the students' interests, uh, what are their motivations, and also what are some of their different concerns. Students today are pretty incredible in terms of their ambitions. During a camp last summer, during free time, I was wandering around and I encountered a student who was reading a Java programming book. And I naturally assumed the student was a computer science student. And by the way, I'm a computer science faculty member. When I sat down and began talking with the student, I learned that the student was actually a biomedical engineering major. Uh, the student's plan was to graduate with his BME degree, then he was going to go off to medical school, then he was going to practice for about 20 years, and after that, he wanted to create a software company in the biomedical area. Wow, okay. That 18-year-old had his whole life planned out. And he was so excited, so excited about being able to start his freshman year. The E2 experience is pretty magical. There's all sorts of fun parts of the camp. One of my favorite parts of camp is watching the students first come in. We have a caravan of buses that come up the mountain from Phoenix, typically five buses, and I like to kind of watch the students getting off the bus. Some of the students are really excited. You can see that. They're happy to be there. Some of them, like Jason, are pretty worried. They're pretty concerned. 
Some of them actually look a little angry. Uh, they think the camp is going to suck, okay? And they're getting pretty mad at mom and dad for making them participate in the experience. But over the next 12 to 24 hours, the magic really starts to occur. The students start having fun, they start making friends, and most importantly, as they see the faculty and staff and all the current students there, they're recognizing that they're really becoming a part of the community and that there is a community that's going to be there for them, going to be helping them as they progress through each year. Data, year after year, when we look at retention data, we see that students who attend E2 consistently, okay, retain at a higher rate in engineering than those that don't. But personally, I know the camp is working, and it happens almost every camp where I'll have at least one or two students that will come up to me at the end of camp. At the end of the camp, they'll come up and they'll say, how do I become a camp counselor? Well, my advice is pretty simple to them. Go back to campus, be a good student, most importantly, stay in engineering, and sign up in the spring. The camp experience is also very rewarding for our current students. Um, one of the things that our current students get out of it as volunteering as a camp counselor, they get a pretty good resume item, they get some connection with faculty, they have something they can talk about in a job interview. Um, being able to discuss some of the leadership and mentoring skills that they developed in practice at camp is, is a pretty big deal. I think all the students who volunteer at the camp, and you can see it in the photo, are having fun. Most of our current students will typically sign up with their friends. It's not a bad thing to go up to Prescott to get away from the heat uh, and have a few days of fun with their friends while also paying it forward and helping out our new freshmen. I think all of the camp counselors also learn a lot about themselves. It's not easy being in charge of a group of freshmen for three days. And I think each of these students begins to reflect upon and learn a little bit more about their own personal leadership style and communication style and mentoring. It's also especially rewarding to observe some of our female camp counselors who actually end up having to lead a team of male students. How does that happen? Well, as you would expect and we keep hearing about, um, females, our females generally volunteer at a higher, significantly higher percentage to be camp counselors uh, than the males do. And as a result, it's pretty typical that some of our um, female camp counselors may end up with a male team. But those young ladies really gain a lot of confidence, a little confidence in their leadership skills when they gain the respect of the guys on their teams. So what does it take to start your own camp? Well, it's gonna take some money. <clears throat> uh, we basically contract with facilities that run camps. So the facility will basically house the students and feed the students, and we don't need to worry about cleaning bathrooms or anything like that. Um, we have a person on our staff, one of our staff our coordinators that will help facilitate and plan all the different camp activities. And there's a lot of logistics, ordering buses, taking care of reservations, paying bills, and so forth. <clears throat> but the most important thing you need to run a camp is volunteers. Faculty and staff that are willing to come up and spend a day, and of course the key item is students, current students that are willing to spend three days of their time. Volunteers, we don't pay them. 10 years ago, that was our biggest worry. Are we going to get any students to volunteer? Well, after the last 10 years and all the camps we've run, we've never had a problem. Okay? Our students are always willing to volunteer. They're always willing to pay it forward, and it's a great experience for all involved. 10 years ago, we actually kicked off our first camp with only four months of lead time. So do the math. There's still time okay, for, for you to be able to do a camp if you want to this fall. So back to E2, what does E2 stand for? Um, that was one of our problems, okay? As we were starting this camp, we wanted to come up with a cool name, and we were kicking around all sorts of things. Engineering everywhere, explore engineering, engineering engagement, we couldn't agree. And so we decided to just call it E2. In fact, it was kind of a placeholder for us, and has been. Over the last couple of years, as we've engaged with Keen, 
we've begun to incorporate a lot of EM and three C's into our activities. And now our brand new freshmen up at camp are starting to recognize it's really not good enough to come up with a good design. You're also going to have to be creating value for the customer to be successful. And so these days, maybe we're starting to think that what E2 might stand for is entrepreneurial engineering. So whatever happened to Jason? Well, Jason was one of those students who did indeed come back during their sophomore year and did volunteer for E2. And he did so again in his junior year and his senior year. And in fact, each year actually volunteered for multiple camps. Jason was also really good at conveying his own personal story to all of his campers, explaining how he didn't want to come to E2 and how he was mad at his mother for making him come, but now thanks his mother because he credits that E2 is taking him out of the comfort zone, helping him to create his engineering identity <clears throat> and helping him become a part of the community. Jason eventually graduated with a BME degree and continues to come back and volunteer and help us out as an alum when his schedule permits. So what are you doing to help students like Jason succeed in your program? We'd like to suggest that you start your own version of E2, or as we sometimes like to say, take a nerd to the woods. We'll be ready to help guide you along the way. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.